morning everybody um, hope you all had a great weekend I just saw I have a long way ahead of me for work but the good thing is there's a lot to talk about from this weekend so I think I can feel <laughs> the almost half an hour that is scheduled to be there um, feeling a little bit better so I'm going to work again of course it would be ideal if I could take probably a few more days but you know I think it'll gonna be all right. Uh, slight cold. Uh, it actually coincided with the Saturday where I really felt the weakest. And, uh, we'll talk about that. So, lots of big games. I think this was the first huge club season weekend. Uh, where the, on Saturday there was embarrassment of riches in great games. So you gotta see it that way. Uh, it was sometimes hard to choose. I'm very happy that at almost every point I made the right decision. Uh, meaning I saw almost all the goals and the important scenes. So let's get right to it. Um, the first game that I really wanted to see was of course the Roman Derby, Derby della Capitale. But um, I started a little bit early so I saw maybe two minutes. Surely not more. Of West Ham United against Manchester United. I saw West Ham is 2 0 up and decided, okay, let's go to pre match uh, for the Derby della Capitale. Um, just my thought is Mourinho is gonna get sacked sooner or later. I don't see it any other way, honestly. Uh, and probably right, right, rightfully so. I think he even wants to get sacked. The way he's complaining about everything. Uh, I really don't see any other way that this is going. Um, I think I said it earlier uh, last week. Um, getting rid of Pogba is the wrong move. Uh, I'm usually in favor of the coach, but if the coach is anyway so unhappy and not um, good for the team, obviously, the coach who gotta go and if you listen to me I'm usually the one retain the coach retain the coach retain the coach retain the coach the more you keep a coach the better uh, it is for your team generally um, non-successful teams fire their coaches at will uh, if you keep a coach two or three years together and it's also starts working in case of the Mourinho it, it's clear it doesn't start working uh, yes, he became second last time, but no, it's just too little. Derby della Capitale, best game of the weekend that I saw. Um, I think, I don't even feel ashamed saying that. It was really, from the beginning, a great game. Lots of atmosphere, the uh, stadium was not full, but I think this is down to the two teams being so much at loggerheads. Uh, on the fan side that uh, it actually almost dangerous to go to that game which also gets the appeal a little bit higher but yeah so Lazio took the game to Roma right from the get-go and had chances probably should have even gone up uh, by a goal I think there are two or three really good chances uh, even in the first 20 and 20 minutes also the Roman Derby from the colors of the two teams is probably one of the best looking games in Europe. You have the light blue of Lazio versus a uh, light blue and white versus the uh, deep um, red and the yellow of Roma. It just looks great. I wish that Roma would play the traditional getup, but actually with the yellow socks and the all red doesn't look that bad. I think it's a decent look for Roma. Of course I prefer white pants and black socks, but you know. And the Lazio kids, both are nice kids. Even with the sponsor, I said it in my um, um, jersey review, I think part six or seven, uh, for Italy. The Lazio kids, even with the sponsor, are some of the best out there. I'm more for Roma, but those Lazio kids, I really wouldn't mind having. This is they, they look awesome, absolutely awesome. Love those. Um, 
really have, have had have to say that. So yeah, uh, as I said, Lazio took it to Roma and then they had, and this was pretty much the point where the game suddenly started um, switching. Up until the 22nd, 20, 23rd, 23rd, was Lazio and Roma was a little bit on the back foot. And then um, there was a big chance for Lazio, I think a cross in that uh, no one could connect and Roma starts a counter attack over Dzeko, where Dzeko is actually out on the left wing and suddenly cuts in and has a big chance himself. Uh, how he could manage to get from the left wing uh, right in front of the goal uh, without a big dribbling, yeah, it's probably the counter attack, but for me Dzeko is not the necessary the counter attacker, but yeah. He got the big chance and from that moment on suddenly Roma had chances and quite some of these and uh, towards the end of the half it seemed like yeah this is gonna settle in a very entertaining 0-0 at half time which would have been probably deserved but nope cross in a little bit weird defending and suddenly Roma gets the one nothing with a really nice goal was it Pellegrini? I think it was Pellegrini who got in for Pastore just a few minutes earlier, which was kind of the weird thing about the whole thing. Uh, that, you know, the substitute <laughs> scores immediately. It was not that it was always a great hand by the coach because, you know, he had to substitute the player who actually was becoming more dangerous. But yeah, he didn't look uh, fully fit. And the way it happened, he was with the back to his goal, so he back healed it in. Um, about as nice a goal as you can get, especially since the goalkeeper uh, was left in a pile with his defenders out there. So yeah, uh, one nothing for Roma, of course I was happy about it, but I, to be honest, it was not, um, at that point, not the deserved lead. And the second half again, um, you saw that Roma has more control of the game at that point, uh, but Lazio actually tried and then they got the equalizer to, uh, through Giro Immobile. And still, although Roma had more of the game at that point, I thought it was in a way deserved because it was still a very open game, very flowing game. Uh, it was really good to watch, really nice to watch. Um, so yeah, uh, it was 1-1. And you could see uh, the Lazio fans singing in the back, Giro, Giro, Giro. And then uh, Roma gets a free kick right on the outside of the box. Uh, at that point, I have to say, at home everything broke loose because my kids really started to fight. Kodorov takes a free kick and makes it 2-1 for Roma. Um, and I think this was more or less sealing the deal for Roma. Uh, that was a big blow to Lazio. You just had the equalizer and four minutes later their free kick is in. Um, and it's 2-1 against for your big rivals. Um, it really felt that the game was done and dusted there. Um, yeah, we tried to calm things down at home in the meantime. <laughs> it's never a dull day when you have kids. That's, that's what I can say for sure. Um, especially if they're waking up and a little bit tired or blah, blah, blah. whatever. No, don't, don't worry with me. And yeah, um, the, um, I have to say that the um, goal for Lazio was basically down to a, a pretty bad defending error by Fazio. Lazio, Fazio, that's funny. And yeah, in the 85th, Fazio made good on his mistake and scored the third goal for Roma. And from then there was no turning back. Um, there was maybe a slight chance for Lazio to get back level to 2-2, uh, two, two, but it never really looked that way. And yeah, Roma made it 3-1. Uh, so Roma had a good week, they really looked awful uh, in Madrid and then losing to Bologna and all the whole season before was not that great but suddenly Roma a little bit is hitting there. So maybe finally hitting their stride it remains to be seen. For Lazio, again, uh, Lazio is one of those teams that wins their games against the teams they have to win and loses against the bigger opponents. Uh, which it's a testament that the coach is doing things kind of right, but also that where do you go from here? Uh, it hurts a little bit that Lazio is at the moment not considered among the absolute top teams in, in Italy. You know, they always talk about the top four 
and I'm actually not sure who is the fourth team at the moment. I mean, it's Juve, Napoli, Roma, Inter maybe, hopefully not. So, you know, Lazio looks like they can be in the top four, but maybe not quite yet. I hope, of course, Milan, but we'll get to those guys a little bit later. So yeah, super entertaining match, uh, kick-started the weekend right on, in the right way, honestly. So I was very happy to see that. Um, of course, once the second half started, it was kind of that there was Barcelona against Athletic, which was not among the top games, uh, the, the four top games on the schedule. But to me, Barcelona against Athletic Bilbao, this is such a classic, it's almost a must watch. So, um, right at the final whistle for Lazio Roma, I, th I thought I wasted so much in this game. It was a great game to watch. Let's watch it all the way to, to, to the end. Switch over, a minute later, Bilbao scores the one uh, Barcelona hitting a rough patch. Draw against Girona at home, losing to Leganes, and now um, being behind against Bilbao. Uh, and it was kind of, I don't know, but the common compliment I said, yeah, maybe at that moment, although it was an even game, maybe it was even deserved. And I think actually Bilbao then took it even a little bit to Barcelona. So yeah, it uh, was a weird game in that sense, absolutely. Um, and the goal taken was nice cross in, the no, the no offside or anything, just could go ahead and score the goal. Um, I didn't see Messi in the starting lineup. Uh, I guess they were saving him for a bigger. I think Barcelona was putting the focus on the Champions League this year. So, uh, or I said in my when I had this little season preview that I actually think that's the chance that Atleti will have. Although they have the Champions League final in their own stadium. So, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Messi comes back and Messi actually tries to take the game to Bilbao. And you could see that the. the this was an angry Barcelona reaction and uh, they had their chance, I think Messi hit the bar, Messi hit the post, um, it was all Messi, Messi, Messi and yeah he got the equalizer, he had a shot, was saved, he deflected in and then Munir Al uh, scored the equalizer, I, I want to say deserved, well they deserved the equalizer, maybe Barcelona would have deserved it game ended 1-1 so next game you win up the big one that was for me the biggest game of the weekend of course the game I saw the least of. Uh, at that time I you know I had a headache I was feeling weak and you know I said okay I saw it was one nothing but to Napoli it was actually a nicely played goal horrible pass from Bonucci um, I don't know about Bonucci I was so happy when he joined Milan, now he's back at Juventus. Uh, didn't play well at Milan, I don't think he plays as well at, 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 at Juventus either. There is just something not right about him. Um, it looked like Napoli is gonna take care of Juventus in the early stages. I mean, the goal by Mertens, you're up, you have other chances. But then right around the 20th and so on, uh, Ronaldo let, uh, let rip a shot. Then. Uh, that was saved and that basically said, okay, Juventus, here we are. Napoli, here we are, Juventus is taking over, that's what I meant to say. Uh, and it was Ronaldo's game, but not in a Ronaldo fashion. Uh, he gave a cross into Majukic, Majukic has to have, just has the empty goal in front of him. Makes it 1-1 and at that point I kind of knew where this game was going. Um, I watched a little bit, I mean I had had, had, had it up, but we had I, we had dinner, so didn't see much of, this, uh, of the first half. I saw there were a few more chances for Juventus. Napoli basically uh, retreated from that point on um, a little bit. And then, yeah, next up, uh, second half starts, Ronaldo hits the post, the deflection goes right to Majukic, 2-1 no turning back from there. Um, there was a red, a yellow red to Mario Rui. Should have been probably one for Insigne and Ponucci, uh, not Ponucci, Chiellini for having a little scuffle there as well. Um, from one side I'm 
all right with them getting um, red car, uh, yellow cards only. But you know, there was a head, but there was a little kick by Insigne. I think both should have been sent off too. Um, and suddenly, uh, even Napoli had a chance to equalize um, through Kayakon, but that was there's a bottle flying here that I don't see. Uh, but you know, Kayakon uh, made a little bit of mess out of, out of that chance, and then uh, a little bit later, Ronaldo again uh, was a cross in, and Bonucci scores a 3 1 game done and dusted switch over to the next game that actually I should have uh, should have maybe switched on, uh, over a little bit sooner F -F after the red red card which is of course uh, Chelsea Liverpool <laughs> the rematch from the league cup but of course the way more important match I did not see the first goal by Hazard only in the replay which was well taken Chelsea seemingly had the better part of the first half but at that time when I switched over it was pretty much the beginning of uh, half of the second half, I was uh, I saw the entire second half of that game, and what I, I, I could see there is that Chelsea a little bit retreating and Liverpool taking the game to them and having uh, chances, but it seemed like um, Chelsea is defending smartly. Uh, maybe they did, but they didn't do so hard enough. Shakiri, honestly, I don't like Shakiri. Uh, whenever I see him, I, I just think of him, and especially Walt, Walt, he did at the World Cup, just don't like him. Um, had a big chance that he probably should have uh, converted. Liverpool looked like they're gonna lose one nothing, and their uh, big uh, winning streak is over. Well, it was over anyway. However, um, Sturridge put in a beautiful goal, absolute beauty at that one. Uh, so well-deserved equalizer, I think. So it ended 1-1. And yeah, we have a new leader in England because of that, Manchester City. England looks to be, at the moment, three teams. I'm surprised that Chelsea is doing so well. Uh, but yeah, we have Manchester City on top. It was uh, We have it in Germany saying, wenn sich zwei streiten, dann freut sich der dritte. Meaning if two are fighting over one thing, then the third one is the one who's happy, and that's exactly what happened here. Uh, they, Chelsea and Liverpool split the points, so of course Manchester City is very happy. Um, Chelsea looks good, although they only played two, two, two draws in the league now, so yeah, the one against West Ham was maybe a little bit unlucky for them, and the one against Liverpool also, yeah. Gotta take the results as they come. I intended to watch the Derby in Madrileño, I just couldn't. I just fell into bed. Uh, 8 30, fell asleep, didn't wake up until 7 o'clock next morning. Honestly, I was dead though. Uh, and I'm happy I didn't miss much. It was a 0 0. I think if I was a director, then I would have hated it. So, 0 0, Atletico having more in the first half, then it's all Real Madrid in the second. But yeah, 0 0. And suddenly we have a race in the league. Uh, La Liga as well. Two weeks ago, I think I said that the top teams are separating themselves. No, absolutely not. Uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid are struggling. Uh, they are still uh, one and two, but Sevilla is right there, Betis is right there, Atleti is right there. So um, there is a race. We have in England a race. In Italy, we don't have a race anymore. Uh, Juve is way uh, ahead. We also don't have a race in uh, France anymore. Uh, but we have a race in Germany again. Bayern also losing. They had a horrible week. I have some slight hope that Ajax might get a result in Munich. I just doubt it. Um, so yeah, we have uh, Dortmund now top of the table. I'm very curious to see where this is going. I just have a feeling that Bayern at one point will just say, okay, see ya guys. But maybe we'll get a different champion. Because I'm also tired of Bayern winning, 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 winning. Yeah, so the league's a little bit more interesting. I'm actually not unhappy about that, especially since I thought it's not gonna go. But England always looked like a two or three horse race. I'm gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see. At these early stages, it might be more than there actually is. Sunday didn't watch almost anything. Uh, 
was a day at home, more or less, for me, doing a few things, but overall tried to rest as well. Uh, you know, still not feeling well, but feeling much better. So, thanks to more than 10 hours sleeping uh, over the night. Uh, so, yeah. I didn't even want, really want to watch Milan because I, I got a little bit frustrated, but in the end, of course, I, I started watching NFL because Milan is always playing on Sunday. I didn't go, get to see much in the NFL, and it was very uh, exciting to watch a little bit Red Zone Channel, but at halftime, most of the games were already also decided. And I said, so I'm going to bring the kids to bed, but I had, of course, the phone and the earphones on for the Milan game. Uh, so I heard the first half. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see it, but I went the goal was scored, although the little one was still not asleep, I just had to watch the goal. Yes, great parenting on my part. But yeah, she fell asleep right at halftime. So I watched the second half. So Milan, Milan was ahead. Uh, they had two good chances uh, to start the game. Then Sassuolo seemingly had two good chances. I haven't seen those. And then Cassie scored a goal. Uh, they actually made the counter attack kind of slow, but he managed to score it anyway, so great job on his part. He's not the goal scorer. And then the second half actually started uh, great. Suzu puts a wonderful shot in. And I more and more I have to say Suzu has become a favorite player at, at Milan. Uh, he really, really, really is one of the most important players of that team. So yeah, he makes it 2 nothing, and that for me was the biggie because 1 nothing and Sassuolo being a very aggressive team but Milan played it smart, they actually had a big uh, defense up which is a little bit counter to what they have been doing uh, in previous games where they actually tried to play but this time I had the feeling they were a little bit more they put up uh, 9 men behind the ball, really built the wall to actually get the offensive juggernaut that is Sassuolo stopped and they managed to do that which was maybe a good thing because you know they play amply I mean I still this they should have killed off the game but uh, they, they play a little bit too open so Susa makes it 2 nothing, and that was a little bit the relief yes we were uh, 2 nothing up against Napoli too but you know Napoli is Napoli as a solo I was hoping uh, that kills it off um, 10 minutes later um, Samu Exit 3 0, his first goal. Castellejo, Samu Castellejo. First goal for Milan. Uh, also very happy because he actually, when he came on against Roma, at first I thought, who is that guy? I really liked how he played and I think he, he deserves a spot in the starting lineup. So, yep, we had it. Uh, two, uh, 3 0, and from that moment I told my wife, who was watching uh, with me a little bit. I'm fine. Ten minutes late, and I also told told the wife here back here. I have a Milan mini shirt. I'm gonna finish this here now uh, with number eight uh, that she got for me from Bulgaria, and she asked me back then, number eight is there anyone special? And I looked up the squad. Suso. I don't know that guy. Well, I know him now. So it was the first time I heard heard about Suso, and I'm happy that it was not the last time. Three nothing. So solo put one back. And you know, I was getting nervous because I made a quick collision. Now, with every 10 minutes, we had a, roughly a goal. So, there is the 80th, there's the 90th. So, Sassuolo could make a 3 3. I told my wife, because uh, she said, Don't you want to see a little bit more exciting? And I said, Not for Milan, I want to see it safe. And yeah, so it was um, uh, 3 1, but it looked and safe. And in the very last moment, Suzo made a 4 1 uh, to really. Settle my nerves. I think it was a big win for me, and I really hope they can get something going now. Um, the other thing I saw, of course, I forgot about it while watching NFL. There was a big game in Greece as well, where Pauk won against Olympiakos. I think it was uh, another big game. Uh, Pauk looks okay, -ish, at least from the uh, standings. Of course, they have a two-point deduction. That was my weekend. I think overall I liked most of the games. I of course would have wished that Napoli gets a result at Juventus. Um, I'm actually happy that Spain is not becoming a boring two-horse race. I think there is more in there. So yeah, England is... 
I like it. I actually am more into soccer now than in NFL, which um, usually in, in the fall I get more into NFL, but maybe that might come later. So yeah, uh, let me know which games you watched. Um, if you saw anything exciting or not, uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon with other topics. Bye.